<laughs> hey, how you doing, YouTube? Uh, glad to see you back, guys. Yep. Hey, uh, this, <laughs> this little hummingbird. We were up in Weston Pass. This was last summer. And, uh, man, I had a lot of fun with those hummingbirds. This new pen, I haven't talked about it, I don't think, much yet. My wife got me this ink pen. It's a Pilot Custom uh, 74. And uh, that was my birthday present this year. And it has really, it's becoming one of a workhorse for me. I really am enjoying using it. Has a medium nib if you happen to do anything. Uh, today we're, it's, I have switched, uh, uh, I don't know, through several months ago I switched from, because I found out uh, the inks. I, for a long time I was using Polar Brown from Noodlers and this is Polar Bear Black which I believe is archival or archivable, whichever you say. And uh, at least it says so. I haven't run any tests on it or anything. And it's a medium nib. So, and this one, I think I'm going to name it uh, the Kerouac. I just finished a book by Jack Kerouac. Uh, a lot of you may not know uh, who he was during the Beat Generation, late 40s. Uh, he wrote a book called On the Road, and I really enjoyed the book. It was, um, I read the original version, which is, you know, there's been uh, several versions because what he did was he went on the road several times and I'm not going to get into the history of the book or uh, but uh, of the beat generation but he wrote the whole thing in something like 21 or 22 days it was quick and uh, but it was after a couple of years of experiences in a lot of notebooks uh, where he traveled across the country uh, hoboing and with another guy so Anyway, a lot of famous authors uh, involved in the book uh, in their youth. You know, he talks about a lot of people. But he wrote the whole thing and uh, without any, there's no, the, there's no paragraphs. There's a lot of grammatical errors and spelling errors, things like that. And just uh, he just sat down and started writing on a scroll. It was a long piece of paper, I think used for like mimeograph machines. I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, anyway. So um, I think I'm going to call this one the Kerouac, the Jack Kerouac pin, because it uh, it's a workhorse. It just loves getting out there and doing it. So obviously we're going to draw a little camp trailer. This is our little camp trailer, and it was parked in a very difficult spot for me to get it into on this particular camp, uh, uh, camp trip up in uh, Colorado we were in. Like I say, I think it was Weston Pass I'm talking about here. There is a campground there, but we, when we can, we stay out of campgrounds. And uh, it was nice. It was nice. But this, this spot, man, I, I had to go backward and forward and several times with the, uh, the judge, the truck that I pull this camper with is, um, you know, an extended cab. It's a long truck, and and with this trailer on it, it, it was just bigger than the spot really was. I don't think if I'd put, I don't think I'd put it there again. But we had a good time. Family came up and visited, and uh, and we camped out there for several days. I can't remember how long. Now, Weston Pass, I think in one of past video, I may have mentioned Weston Pass. Um, and I thought we were higher than we were. Uh, it's in some tall mountains, but the pass apparently is 11,921 feet. And we were camped a few, several hundred feet, I imagine. We never went to the pass. So I imagine we were camped, I don't know, like high 10,000s or low 11,000s, you know, somewhere like that. I do know that the phones quit telling the altitude and quit working. So, and I assumed back then, I, I assumed that it was higher than that, but, uh, but uh, maybe, it, but uh, I read on the internet that it wasn't. 
anyway it's kind of cool up there it's a really beautiful location if you get a chance and if you go up there um, it's near the town of Fairplay Colorado anyway Sturt Road goes up there I didn't look it up if you decide to go I'm sure you'll have fun and and find the roads but there was some numbers along the road and I had no idea what they were I don't know I didn't see a sign that said anything I have since found out on the internet that those numbers are an auto tour so it looks like it might be pretty interesting to uh, listen to I'd look it up on the internet before you go up there so you can take the tour because uh, apparently the road was called um, the road to riches I believe and uh, you know the the road that went over the pass and it was a dirt road and so might be kind of interesting might be fun to do this is just uh, lemon yellow and uh, a couple of different greens I'm using olive green and uh, what's that other one I can't think of it oh well sorry guys can't think of what it was of what the green is there and this is another one that I really wonder if it wouldn't have looked neater had I not painted the whole thing if you draw one you might experiment with that and uh, paint just you know leave something unpainted like this ground that I'm painting here the ground color I think kind of uh, it's nice but it seemed like it made it a little more boring you know not as exciting not as inviting So yeah, the hummingbirds, man, as you saw that hummingbird up front, I took a lot of video. I drank some beer, uh, quite a few beers, and sat out there, I think, for a couple of hours. And uh, Sherry, uh, my wife, had purchased a couple of hummingbird feeders for me just because I wanted some. So I didn't know she was going to. When she came out of the store, she had a couple hummingbird feeders. And man, those birds, it was raining. And uh, the hummings, uh, little hummers kept coming. I was surprised, man. They, they just kept eating right, right in the rain and fighting and arguing, chasing each other. But I just had so much fun with the hummers. I sat out there under a, you know, kind of a, a cluster of trees so that uh, I wasn't getting a lot of rain on me, just a slow drizzle from the, that was making it through the trees. And just had a great time watching the hummers. I've got a lot of footage of hummingbirds flying around in those hummingbird feeders. It's pretty pretty fun. Right down below, you see I'm kind of faded that background. It drops off right there. Uh, we were up, up about, I don't know, 30, 40 feet. And then there's a really nice little river that you could fly fish down there. And... Uh, like I say, there is a campground up there, not too far, from a couple miles back. We went a little past the campground and uh, camped up there. There's quite a few spots. It wasn't real crowded. At least the spots that are just in the National Forest that aren't uh, like campground spots. I did. I left you a little bit uh, picture, uh, the picture I used here. And uh, there's the mat. And I'll sign it here in a minute. I didn't put much shadow in it. And uh, I might draw it again for myself and put shadow in it. But the truth is, it was a very overcast day, so there wasn't a lot of shadow. The overcast tends to even out the lighting and make it almost one lighting. So, as usual, I had a great time. I hope you guys give it a shot. Kind of busy this weekend, so I'm going to say adios. I left a, a picture or two at the end here and a little bit of footage of the uh, campsite. Y'all take care. I'll see you on the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.